Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back. As you might know, I am obsessed with seasonal color analysis and how wearing our best colors can enhance our overall coloring and just make our overall mood feel a little bit more lifted because it's so hard not to be in a great mood when you are surrounded by the colors that just make your features pop and sparkle. Today we are covering a group that is very close to my heart and that is the Summer Seasonal Color Analysis Color Palette. I'm predominantly a light summer, but I do like to tiptoe into the cool summer colors. We are gonna be looking at my highlight, contour, and bronzer. So we're gonna take a look at colors that I've got in my collection that I like for light summer, cool true summer, or soft muted summer. So that means everything in this video is going to be on the cool undertone to neutral cool undertone. So if that sounds interesting to you, grab a snack because it's going to be longer and let's get right into this video. So to start off my collection, let's take a look at highlighters because highlighting is normally one of the first steps in my makeup routine. Up first, we have liquids, Auric Glow Lust. This is the second iteration of Morganite, sometimes known as Morganite 2.0. Underside of my arm is closer to a MAC NC13. It's about two to three shades lighter than my face and it does have more of that kind of bluish quality to it where my face is more pinky. This is a really beautiful peach pink with a more cool leaning neutral cool shift. I love that it gives coverage and helps to perfect the skin, whether you use it under your foundation, mix it with your foundation or on top of your foundation, really, really beautiful. And for the reflect that it gives, I find it helps to smooth texture. If you are someone who is interested in a liquid highlight and you you want to try something that is just really good, easy to wear, and you have fair to, I would say, light, maybe like medium skin tones, I would say give the Auric Glow Lust Morganite a chance. It's really, really beautiful. Next, I have the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Elevated Glow. This is the shade Pink Moon, and this is supposed to be for slightly more fair and more cool toned skin. It works, but it's just slightly peach. Actually, compared to the Oracle Glow Lust, there is no slightly peach. It is just very peachy. I generally use this under my foundation. As you blend and spread the products, it does become more translucent. It acts like a really beautiful peachy pink glaze on the skin. This is going to pull a little bit more on the neutral side. It's not warm enough to be considered a warm tone, but it's not cool enough to be considered a true cool tone. So for me, I find this lane's pretty neutral. And with this being neutral, I feel like this would do really well for your transitional season. So that would be seasons like deep dark winter, bright clear winter, or you could do light or bright spring or soft muted summer. I like it. I'm gonna hang on to it. I just wish there was something a little bit more cool toned because this does have a film former, which helps to smooth the skin. And it's really beautiful, especially for areas near like the outer corners of the eyes or like where you would have curse feet. This is really nice for smoothing the texture of the skin. You can almost see, I don't know if you can really pick up on camera, but if you look at here where the pink moon is from Lisa Eldridge versus Morganite from Orc, you can see there's some of my natural texture, but here Elevated Glow is, it just looks a little bit smoother. Really lovely. One of my favorites and the most affordable, this is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Glotion in shade 901 Fair Glow. I went through one or two of before I even began creating YouTube videos. I remember there was one day I had just moved to Canada and I was walking through a kind of superstore or grocery store called Real Canadian Superstore when this had launched and I purchased it. This is again a neutral leaning cool toned fairly translucent pink beige shade. It's really beautiful. It gives a really nice light reflect to the skin but it never appears heavy. It never emphasizes texture. never looks heavy on the skin and in my opinion it is the most light weight option of the five liquid illuminators I'm going to use today. It's just really beautiful. I find it leaves the least amount of glow to the skin. This is one I really like and if you want to try one that is on more on the affordable side, I would say try this. This does come in a few deeper shades, but the deeper shades do pull more on the warm side. This is going to be the most cool toned option of the different shade options they have. One of my favorites, the Chanel LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops. One thing to know about this is if you don't clean it regularly, it gets very, very grubby. Other than that, it's really beautiful. So I'm gonna swatch down here. You can see right off the bat with blending it, it's taking on this more silvery pink 
color. Compared to the three, it almost has this kind of blue lilac shift that really picks up on the blue in the veins on my underarm. But this is just a really beautiful highlight. And I feel like of the highlighters that I have, this is the best option for any of the winter or any of the summer color palettes, but this will do best cool, true winter or cool, true summer. Beautiful. In the most recent liquid illuminating enhancing product, this is the number one Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Skin Enhancer. And this is the shade Soft Pink. I did not read the full description when I saw this because I did not read the description. I saw this in my friend Maria of Night Star Beauty. She reviewed this and then I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know this was a thing. I love the foundation, so I have to have this. So <laughs> I didn't read anything about it. I messaged my essay and I said, I want this. And she's like, all right, I'm in the store tomorrow. I will send it to you. And then after I got it, I'm like, oh wow, that's that's very peachy. But reading online, it does mention it has an apricot tint to help perfect the skin tone. And apricot it is. If you look at it compared to the other colors, it's going to be the deepest color and the warmest color. Even though this is called soft pink, I feel like it's workable for your transitional season. So this is going to be far too warm for cool true winter and cool true summers, but it's really beautiful. You do have to be careful and make sure that all of your skincare products have dried down because if your skincare is the least bit tacky, it does like to pill like I'm experiencing here. So those are all of my liquid highlights and they're pretty much a great match for my fair cool toned skin with the number one Chanel and soft pink being the deepest color followed by Lisa Eldridge and Pink Moon. Next, I have my four cream highlighters. First one I've already opened up because the packaging itself is very, very reflective. This is the It Cosmetics Hello Light Anti-Aging Cream Luminizer. This is sadly starting to feel a little dry. If I warm it up, it will reinstate, but this is a pretty translucent, warmer shade. So this is again, good for your transitional winter or summer color palettes, but it's so beautiful. And I feel like this is on the verge of being discontinued because it is becoming very difficult to find. I believe the last time I looked, I could only find it on, I think, the American Home Shopping Network website and the Canadian It Cosmetics website. It's just one of those products that's really good, but I feel like it was underappreciated and it's being phased out. If you can get your hands on this and you have more neutral cool, neutral or neutral warm skin, give this a go. It's really beautiful and it does not emphasize fine lines, pores or texture on the skin. Stunning, stunning product. Another longtime favorite of mine, this is the Clinique Chubby Stick Sculpting Highlighter in the shade 01 Hefty Highlight. I love the Clinique Chubby Stick packaging. I mean, one, you've got this really beautiful soft pink color, but more importantly, just something about this formula is so much fun to work with. Compared to the It Cosmetics, this is a much more cool toned icy pink. This is going to be great for cool true winter, cool true summer, as well as the transitional seasons. Formula is very, very smoothing. It has more opacity compared to the It Cosmetics, but it is such a pleasure to work with. My only complaint is I wish they had other shades because currently this is the only shade they offer. So I wish they had something for neutral and warm toned skins as well as deeper skin since I feel like this color is quite limiting to like a very small demographic of people with my coloring. If the color of the Clinique Chubby Stick in Hefty Highlight works for you and you're curious about it, I'd say give it a go. It's really, really beautiful and very flattering on the skin. Another oldie but a goodie, this is the Physician's Formula Muru Muru Butter Highlight in the shade Pearl. This has been a favorite of mine for quite a while. This is one of the best drugstore cream highlighters and this dries on to a powder. I had a comment on a recent video saying this was too warm for a viewer who was a cool true winter. But for me, I feel like this is, I would say it's neutral at best. If you have the most cool blue purple undertones, this might pull warm, but I feel like it's quite neutral. Like for me, I don't feel like it's pulling too gold. I don't feel like it's pulling too pink. If I look at the color of the It Cosmetics and the Clinique, I feel like this sits kind of right in the middle. But 
Again, if you are a true cool undertone person, and if your surrounding features like your eye color, hair color, and lip color, if they're all cool toned, this being neutral will pull very warm. So that's a great point. And I love when people share that type of stuff with me in comments because it helps me to reevaluate what I'm sharing with people because my experience is very limited. Like for me, this is neutral, very workable for most skin tones. But for someone who is more cool toned than I am, I can see where this pulls too warm. So thank you so much for sharing that with me and this again is the physician's formula butter highlight in the shade pearl and the most recent cream highlighter to my collection is the westman atelier super loaded tinted highlighter in the shade peau de rose there's a new youtube beauty creator i am following her name is simply blair she was sharing her love of the shade of peau de peche peau de peche is a little too warm for me so i decided to try peau de rose this works equally as well under liquids over liquids as well as under and over powders compared to the other form this does have a visible shimmer in the formula. It's going to have the most glittery finish of all, but there's something about this formula, the way it lays on the skin. It's quite smoothing. It's quite cocooning. It is going to be the warmest of all the shades. So if we look at the other three shades, this does have more of almost a coral rose shade to it. It's warmer. So this is once again, going to be best for your transitional seasons. I feel like this should be best for your light or bright summer as well as soft muted summer. This might be able to work for your winter transitional seasons, but it doesn't quite have that vibrancy I would want for those seasons. Like, do you see how these kind of contrast the skin where the peau de rose kind of blends in? I feel like this is to do better for the summer seasons. They're muted. There's a lower contrast and something like this would just kind of sit and meld with skin where these are going to kind of pop and give it a little bit more of that beaming quality, which does well for high contrast seasons. But if you blend it, play with it, I feel like any of them would work for any of those transitional seasons. And it's just really all about personal preference. But here are my cream highlight. So from the top, we have the Cosmetics Hello Light, Clinique Chubby Stick and Hefty Highlight, Physicians Formula Butter Highlight and Pearl, and the Westman Atelier Super Loaded Tinted Highlighter in the shade of Peau de Rose. So now we are moving into powder highlights. The first one I have here is from Chanel. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a product that my friend Lena of Lena Lore told me about in the shade number 40, White Opal. Standard half moon brush with a little color protector. Mine looks very grubby because I use it quite a lot and I've worn off the really beautiful embossment but this is a really beautiful opalescent cool toned highlight depending on the light depending on the skin tone it reflects kind of purple a little pink you can even get some green and some soft gold in this highlight i feel like this is workable for any of the winter or summer seasons but i can see where someone with a very very cool undertone meaning skin tone hair color eye color lip color those are all very very cool toned this might still pull a little warm but if you're someone who is mostly cool but you have some more neutral aspects this would be very, very workable. So again, great for your transitional winter color palette and summer color palette seasons. So that is Chanel White Opal. Next, we have the older packaging of the Clay de Peau Luminizing Face Enhancer. This is shade number 14, Delicate Pink. And you have this really beautiful kind of mosaic blend. I will never get over how creamy these are. And again, you can see mine looks scrubby, but I use it. And you know, this is one of those products I should probably let go of, but it still works well. Well, and it's only going on my face, so I am okay risking it. This is a really beautiful, soft, beige, rose gold shade. This does have a neutral aspect to it. So again, great for your transitional winter or summer seasons. This would definitely be a no-go, in my opinion, for your cold true winter, cold true summer. But it's really beautiful, and it is silky as can be on skin. I love this. If I ever run out of this, I will sadly break down and buy another one. But this time I'll probably buy the refill because you can buy this separate and just put into a new, can put into like an empty palette. So I will buy just the refill going forward, but overall Clay de Peau Skin Enhancer, really, really lovely. We have a product from the brand Clio. This is the Clio Prism Highlighter Duo in 02 Lavender Voyage. And here you have two different options. So you have a more refined satin finish highlight in this lavender color, really pretty. This is going to be, if I'm not mistaken, the most cool toned highlight option. And then 
here you have the other side, which will be a little bit more of a peachy shade. This has more of a duochrome aspect. Really, really beautiful. And compared to the Clay de Poe, these definitely feel more cool toned. And I feel like even though this like peach rose gold shade looks warm in the pan, it on the skin, it almost pulls a silvery color that makes it look about the same temperature of neutral cool as the Chanel highlight. So Cleo's Lavender Voyage highlighting duo, really pretty. One of my favorites, Dior Forever Couture Luminizer in 02 Pink Glow. Again, one of those products that you just know my grubby paws are constantly in because you can't even see the beautiful Dior embossment anymore. This is my favorite going out highlight. It looks a little bit more demure swatched here, but if you apply this with a fan brush, like I think it's the refer number 20, the refer fan brush, and you apply this with that fan brush, ooh, you are going to be seen from all corners of space. It is beautiful. And again, it's going to be more of a neutral, neutral to neutral warm pink. So again, this is probably more ideal for your transitional winter and summer seasons. Beautiful. We have the NARS. I think this is called the Powder Highlighter in Capri. Now, I don't know if this is still around. I think it's still around. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, these are still relatively newer to the NARS range, newer be it by like a few years. This is gonna probably be the most warm highlight and I find it Pulls quite muted on the skin. So I feel like this highlight would probably do well for, I would say deep dark winter, soft muted summer, soft muted autumn and deep dark because it's like that neutral leaning, neutral warm rose champagne color. And it has that more muted aspect. So I feel it could do better for the more muted color palettes that are neutral leaning, neutral warm or neutral cool. So that is NARS powder highlight and capri. We have a newer highlight. I think I've only worn this once. This is the Peri, Peri Para Glory Highlighter and Pure Glory Highlighter to be exact in shade number two, Night Glory. I purchased this on, I believe, Yes Style and it came with a little brush. I'm gonna have to swatch this right here. This reminds me of almost the color from the Clio Duo, the Lavender Voyage. So this more lavender shade and the kind of sparkle shade of those two colors mixed together. It's really pretty. Even though it's glittery, it is still quite smooth. And that's something that really impresses me with K-Beauty highlighters. They tend to be quite glittery, but even though they have those visible glitters to the formula, they still manage to have a slightly smoothing effect compared to something like the other Dior highlighter I have in my winter selection, which is more of, in my opinion, a pure winter color because it's very high contrast reflective and that one's very glittery and shows off all of the texture. So this again is great for your winter transitional seasons or your summer transitional seasons. And I will note, I did say this video is my summer makeup collection, but as I mentioned, a lot of my seasonal color palette makeup tutorials, there is a lot of overlap within what you can use for your makeup if you are a winter color palette person or a summer color palette person. Highlighters, bronzers, contours, there's so much nuance, so much variation, and the colors can be adapted depending on how you apply it and what type of brush you'd like to use. So I feel like you can't, for the most part, you can't take a single highlighter and be like, this is just for color palette A or color palette B. I feel like it's like, it can work for a selection of you. And you know, that's where I've run into some people disagree with me with seasonal color analysis, but I like things to be easy. And I don't want people to feel like they're stuck in a box. Like use your color palette to guide you in finding colors that are gonna look best for your skin tone and make you feel great. But if something's not exactly a cool winter color or a light summer color, but you still want to use it, use it. If it makes you happy, it will look beautiful on you, no matter if it's your color or not. Use what makes you happy. So <laughs> that is my rant. This is from Roman, and this is from their Hambach collection. And this is the Tinted Veil in, I think it's called Moonlight. Yeah, I can't read that. It's all in Korean, but I think it's called like Moonlight Veil or something like that. This is a lot more sheer. This is definitely more of a pink lavender. And compared to the Peri Peri or the Clio, this is gonna be a little bit more on that cool tone side, but it still has a fleck of neutrality to it. So for me, that puts this into that, again, transitional winter or transitional summer color palette. Next, we probably have the oldest highlighter in my collection and it's, it's looking rough. I've broken the lid. Um, 
but it's just she's been with me for a while and I love it so much. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in shade Blossom Glow. This is going to be a warm, neutral warm champagne pink color. Again, this is going to probably be better for your slightly higher contrast or slightly higher chroma transitional color palette. So this would be great for your bright, clear winters or your light, bright summers. I like this. It does show off more texture compared to a lot of the options, but for the Wet n Wild price, you really can't go wrong. If you want a highlighter that is going to stand out and give you some impact, this is your highlight. Wet n Wild Blossom Glow from the Mega Glow range. Really, really beautiful and mine is still breaking off. Now we have a few highlighters from limited edition collections I just cannot bring myself to part with. The first one is from the Chantecaille Holiday Collection from Holiday 2021. This is called Pearl Lumiere, and you have the really beautiful pearl embossment or detailing on the front. On the inside, you have the really beautiful bird perched on the tree, and I am wearing off this embossment, but it is just one of the most beautiful highlighters. It gives you impact, but it smooths the skin like no other. Like for me, this reminds me of a cross between the the Chanel White Opal and the Dior Pink Glow. But when you put it on somewhere that is not your wrist, that is highly textured, it looks really beautiful and really smooth. It is a little bit warmer than the other two options, but on the skin, it almost turns into this transparent glow. And I don't want to talk about and romanticize this product anymore because you can't get it, but it's one of those limited edition products I just can't, I can't let go of. I travel with this all the time because it is so beautiful. And if I'm not mistaken, and this was a re-promote from a previous collection. So fingers crossed that Shantakai will bring this out again in the future because it is one of the most beautiful highlighters, I feel like. Also from Winter Holiday 2021, we have a Clay de Poe Facial Luminizer. This is number 103, Wonderful Radiance. And this looks very similar to the Delicate Pink, except now you have the little pink handle on the brush and you have pastel shades. So you have the pastel pink, icy blue, like a marigold shade and a off white color. Mix them all together and I'll apply it here next to the Chantecaille. And this just gives a very beautiful, slightly off white glow. It's a very snowy glow. You're not gonna really see this show up because this is pretty much my skin tone, just a fraction brighter. And for the last, I feel like since winter holiday 2021, I go on a trip, I take these with me. I feel like I should have hit pan on these by now, but there's no sign of pan. And I mean, even on this clay de poe, you can still see all the little groups between the different colors like I don't use it but I do and when I use it I use this little brush this little brush that comes with the clay de po highlighters is actually really really nice same with the Chanel the half moon brush in the Chanel is really good too but I I wish they would bring this back and look at this I love this so much I love the little the little lambs and you have all the beautiful flowers and you have little cardinals how many of you remember the Laura Geller baked gelato swirls this is the shade charming pink back in YouTube circa 2014 if I'm not mistaken, it was around the same time as Jaclyn Hill and Becca did their collaboration and released the um, Shimmering Skin Perfector powder in Champagne Pop. But the Laura Geller Bait Gelato Swirl and Gilded Honey was all the rage. I was not a fan of Gilded Honey even back then before Susan Color Analysis. I knew gold did not look great on me. This was the color I want for. This is Charming Pink. This is again, very similar to something like the Dior Pink Glow, but again, this is gonna be a little bit more metallic. You can still find this occasionally on the Laura Geller US Amazon storefront, but if I'm not mistaken, the Baked Gelato formula has been discontinued from Laura Geller and it's a shame because it is beautiful, it is high shine. And I mean, even here on the heel of my hand. The hand is very, very textured. If you want to test a product's texture, swatch it on your hand. If it emphasizes texture here, or if it smooths texture here, you know it's gonna look even better on your face. So like here, where my hand is textured, this looks pretty smooth. Like if we compare side by side, it's definitely metallic, but it doesn't look creepy. So I would be more than comfortable wearing that on my face, and I do. This is a really great product, and I would say if you can find a shade that you like and you wanna give it a go, do it because it's a great product. 
but again, sadly discontinued. And the most recent highlighter that I have fallen in love with, also from Laura Geller, this is the original baked highlight in the shade French Kiss. Now, depending on which sales associate you reach on the chat forum on their website, some people, some of them will say this is discontinued. Others will say it's currently out of stock and there's not an expected shipment date, but we're gonna put this, I'll do it right here. So here is Charmy Pink. Look at that, right here on the sole of my hand where it is textured, it still somehow smooths that. Again, I found this on the Laura Geller US Amazon storefront, but French Kiss is going to be a more warm pink. So this is technically gonna be better for your, I would say bright clear winter, bright clear spring, light summer, or light spring color palettes because it does have some of a white base to it that makes it kind of stand out, come forward, and it has some more contrast to it. But I think it's beautiful. I love this. And th like I was saying, depending on which customer service associate you speak with on the chat forum for Laura Geller's customer service, sometimes they'll say this is out of stock and they just don't have a reship date. And other times they'll say it's discontinued, but it's still available in the little pinwheel that comes with this and three other shades. I personally wouldn't buy the pinwheel because this is the only shade from the Laura Geller baked highlighters that works for me. I'm going to hang on to this and share this, cherish this until it's out. But thankfully, Laura Geller highlighters last ages. So here is all of the powder highlights. I love highlight. So for cream contours, I have three. The first one we're going to take a look at is from e.l.f. This is the putty bronzer in the shade called Feelin' Shady. Now this is something that really surprised me because a few of the other e.l.f. products I had tried that labeled themselves as a cool undertone were not cool. This one is definitely on the cool side. It definitely feels to me like a cool olive shade. This almost reminds me of the color of a healing bruise, which despite being an unattractive description of what the shade is, it works really well for creating contour. It's like my skin tone, slightly deeper, and it creates a shadow effect. Like if you look at my skin around this, where the highlight, where the contour cream is, it looks like it's receding, it's pushing back because that is what a good contour shade for my skin tone will do. Contouring shades are all relative. You need to find a shade that is slightly more gray than your skin tone and slightly deeper. Generally for like a everyday contour, one to three shades shades is the kind of range that you want to go through. I tend to stick between one to two shades darker because that's my comfort zone. It keeps things a little bit easier to blend out. Elf, Putty, Bronzer, and Feeling Shady. Great for fair skin tones. And I would say this would work well for any winter or any summer color palette as long as you are on the fair to light spectrum of color. One of my favorites, the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer in the shade 01 Amber. Prior to this, I did have the Matchstick in Amber, and that pulled a little bit more green gray than the Elf Feeling Shady, but this cream bronzer. This is going to probably be as dark as I go for me in my comfort zone for a bronzer, but ooh, that is that is rich. It is luxe, but it does pull slightly more on that green yellow side of cool than the slightly more red blue that the e.l.f. does. Like if you look at two, this almost looks red or rosy compared to this greeny color that the Fenty takes on. I really like this. And I would say this would work better for your summer seasons because it does have that more muted quality to where winters could probably pick up on that slightly rosy tinge that the e.l.f. has without making them feel too gaunch or too hollow. But I mean, either could really work. It's all on how you apply it and how you make it work for you. They are both great for cool toned color palettes. It just depends on if the color works for you. Like I said, coloring is highly variable and you have to find the shade that works for you. Next, we have the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick in the shade Biscuit. This was the first product I had, I purchased from Westman Atelier and I was just really disappointed. Look, it's warm. Compared to these two, it feels orange. Ooh, mine's, this is getting old. It's no longer like super creamy. But this definitely, for me, this is muted, yes. So that means it would either work for summer or autumn. But if we compare these two and we look at the undertones, this one, it feels more lively. So that would mean 
it might not be the best bet for a soft autumn, but soft autumn I feel like can make it work. I feel like this would do really well for bright clear spring, soft or muted spring, possibly soft muted autumn or deep dark autumn. I don't feel like it has enough warmth for the true warm spring or autumn seasons, but I feel like it's too warm for the winter or the summer color palettes. Now, that being said, if you have a transitional winter or summer palette that is more on the neutral versus the cool neutral side, this could work for them, but I am not one of those people. I am on the neutral cool side and this pulls too warm for me. So I'm going to move this to my, I'm going to put this in my autumn drawer and I'll reevaluate it in the autumn season when I go through that drawer. So all three are still staying. I'm just going to move the West Atelier Face Trace Contour in Biscuit to my autumn makeup selection and then the So Elf and Fenty are gonna stay. So next we have this little selection of my, tr my true contour and bronzer shades. So first one we're gonna look at is from Flower Beauty. This is the Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer in the shade L1 Sunrise. Now, this was something that I really wanted to try out because I heard Shelly from Geek Out of Water talk about as one of her favorites, and it's a really beautiful shade. For me, I find it pulls a little too warm, a little too orangey. Again, I would say this is gonna be better for a light spring or a light autumn, but looking at this shade here, hmm, hold on, I have an idea. There was something that felt orange on the top of this, so I'm gonna mix it together again and re-swatch. Fascinating, after wiping off whatever residual dust was on top, now it's swatching slightly more cool toned. This still feels a little too warm for, tr for a cool or true winter or summer. I feel like this could work for a soft muted summer, soft muted autumn, possibly, Deep Dark Autumn, Deep Dark Winter. Mm, I have the hunch to move this to my autumn drawer. Gucci Beauty Eclat Soleil Bronzing Powder in 01, which I believe is called Fair. So, so pretty. This is so interesting. I've got some high-end makeup in my collection, but for some reason, the Gucci bronzer is the product I use the most sparingly because I have this insidious fear that I'm going to run out and I will never get my hands on it again. Meanwhile, I have collected three of the Gucci blushes like they were Pokemon cards. So why is that same scarcity mindset not there for this bronzer? But this bronzer, you can definitely can see compared to the Flower Beauty, this does have more of that pinky color to it and it's slightly more matte, which means it doesn't have that same type of light reflect that the Flower Beauty Heat Wave bronzer does. I love this. Again, I feel like this is still going to be too warm for cool, true winter, cool, true summer, but this is stunning for soft muted summer, soft muted autumn, and I feel like light or bright summer can get away with this as well. So definitely hanging on to my Gucci bronzer. And if you are someone like me and you are on that light, bright, cool tone side, you can make this work. I would say use a light hand. I like using a large fluffy powder brush like the, I think it's the Ruffer number 22 or 25, their flagship powder brush. Very large, very fluffy. Even something like this ColourPop F28, it's going to help pick up the product and distribute. Just get a little bit on and then really whisk and feather it out and a bronzer like this will give you just a really subtle veil of color. Now, my bronzer that I think I love even more than the Gucci, like if I'm on a desert island and I can only have one of these two, I love Gucci, I love this beautiful vintage looking compact, but I'm going for my Laura Geller Bait Bronze and Brighten Multi-Purpose Bronzer in the shade Fair. I, first of all, love this really gorgeous marble pattern. But when I swatch it, you can see compared to the Gucci bronzer, it is more fair and it has this more rosy aspect to it. So that pink swirl and that more red wood chocolate shade really come through. And also this does have like this off-white beige vein running through it, which adds this lightness to it. So if you can see, if you look at the Gucci bronzer and the Laura Geller, they're both a pink or red based bronzer, but the Laura Geller has more of a white base, which makes it feel like the bronzer's coming 
Ford. So I feel like in my mind that puts the Gucci better for a soft muted summer and the lower Geller in a better situation or a better place for the light or bright summer, which makes sense why I love it so much. And this bronzer, if you were having a bad skin day, you take a big fluffy brush and you just whisk it all over like where you apply your bronzer, run it through your crease. It just smooths everything away. Like I know I'm biased, but this bronzer gives me everything. So if you are a fair to light skin tone with cool to neutral cool or neutral undertones, and you just want a bronzer that won't make you look orange, won't make you look muddy, seek out the Laura Geller bronzer. It's stunning. It's beautiful. She is the moment. I love it so much. And then the only dedicated contour product I have, this is the Peri Para V Shading Ink V Shading, and this is number three, Hazel Gray. So in here, you have three different shades. You have a light, medium, and a deep shade. To be honest, I just take my brush into it and I mix all three together. So here's a light shade, here's the medium shade, Here's the deep shade. This is going to be a more cool, oaty green gray color. I like it. If I really want to do a true contour, I will use this, but I'm not a big contour person. Like I like to use my blushers or I like to use a powder foundation that's slightly deeper than my skin to do my shaping. But you know, if I'm gonna do a picture, if I'm gonna create a thumbnail and I want some nice contoured shading, that's when I reach for this and I normally just mix all three shades together. But if you are, I would say again, any of the winters, any of the summers, this would be a nice contour color palette to work with. Speaking of powder foundation, I adore powder foundation. A few shades deeper than my skin tone to do some very subtle bronzer or what I like to say, bronzing because they are the same color as your skin essentially but just slightly deeper so let me remove these swatches and we'll take a look two of these i have talked about at nauseam on my channel max studio fix and bare minerals matte these are my holy grail powder foundation formulas two of them because i also adore the laura geller baked bronze baked bounce and brighten powder foundation but i don't have that in a shade deeper because the deeper shade pulls too warm for me but these are a holy grail formula I want to try this one size turn up the base versal powder foundation in the correct shade because this is the one I bought and it's too dark but it's beautiful as a bronze tour color and then we have the Sephora collection so let's start off with bare minerals this is the matte and I have shade fairly medium C20 so with this normally you'd knock it into the cap but since we're doing swatches i'm just take some on my wrist and then blend now here on my wrist this doesn't look significantly darker than my skin tone which is the point i want this color to warm up my skin tone and add a little bit of depth like for reference i'm gonna take my laura geller bronzer and i'm gonna put that right up here so this way we have a comparison so laura geller baked balance and bronze in the shade fair this is my ideal bronzer color deeper than my skin tone and more rosy it's going to give me like it's gonna give me that effect i've spent a little bit too long of the sun it's gonna give me a little bit of depth when I'm using a powder foundation as a bronzer, contour, hybrid color, I want something that is going to be one to two shades deeper than my skin tone, and it's going to add some warmth to my skin that will create an effect like, you know, maybe I spent like 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the sun too long. I got a little bit of color versus like I spent the entire week in Barbados. So <laughs> Bare Minerals Matte Foundation in the shade Fairly Medium. Next, we are gonna take a look at the MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation. This is shade N4. And funny story, N4 was my foundation color for years. But then I had a few sessions of IPL done on my face and that cleared up a lot of my topical redness and it cleared up some of my sun damage and then shade in four when it oxidized because mac studio fix powder it does run into oxidation so you have a dry down which is when you first apply it it gets a little bit darker and then it oxidizes or it mixes with your oils and becomes slightly deeper when i first apply this it looks good give it about 30 to 45 minutes and then it gets too dark but when that happens this becomes the most beautiful brontour color for me so mac studio fix powder in four this is a neutral rose beige 
color and it's really beautiful for creating the most sneaky sculpting effect on the skin. Next up, we have the One Size Turn Up the Base Versal Powder Foundation in the shade I purchased is Light 1R. I don't think I've swatched this on my wrist before, but when I first, oh yeah, you can see compared to the other two, this is significantly darker. And the, when I first bought this, I didn't swatch it. I ordered it online. And ooh, that is smooth. Oh, it is so smooth on the back of my arm, especially like, I mean, the Bare Minerals and the MAC, those are always smooth. That's why they're two of my favorites, but this looks like it's blurring out all of the texture, the hair follicles, everything. That's beautiful. <laughs> Shade Light 1R. It's a gorgeous, slightly darker color than I normally go for, for this bronzer effect, but it is beautiful. So I love this. And then I purchased this one during the most recent Sephora sale, because during your Sephora savings event, Sephora Collection is normally 30% off for all beauty insiders. This is the Sephora Collection Matte Perfection Powder Foundation in number 10 Fair Pink. And in the pan, looks once again really nice. But on, this oxidizes like this really oxidizes and it gets quite dark and this one pulls slightly more kind of a neutral beige you can see this is warming up as this warms up into the skin it is deepening very very quickly they all end up being around the same level of color they're just slightly darker than what i can wear all over as a powder foundation but they are great for those days where i want to add a little bit of color but i don't want as much color as a bronzer i have different shades that i can vary and even use them in combination to gradiate my colors and create a my skin but better naturally glowy effect. So that is why I love having a powder foundation two to three shades deeper than your skin tone to kind of warm it up a little bit. And that works really, really well no matter what your seasonal color palette is, no matter what your skin tone is. Take a powder foundation, one between one and three shades darker with the same undertone as your skin, and you can use it as a powder bronzer. And that's something I did a lot when I was a freelance makeup artist because having a lot of different powder foundations is way easier than having a ton of bronzers. It's easier to get more mileage out of powder foundation than some other powder products. So two of my bronzers, so the Westman Atelier Face Trace Stick and the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzer are gonna be moved to my autumn color drawer and everything else is staying here in the summer color drawer. Wow, <laughs> that, was, that was fun. That was a really fun exercise. I love swatching everything. Like I'm recording my outro after I have swatched everything and we are going on about nine and a half hours of recording. But that being said, it has just been so wonderful looking at all of the different colors. And this video is the highlight contour and bronzer picks for the summer seasonal color palettes. And it's just all very fascinating. And I love how colors can really play off of each other and depending on what you mix and what you layer, it can take on a slightly different shift. So I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. Let me know any questions or comments down in the comment section and take care of yourself until the next time we are able to hang out together. I will see you later. Bye y'all.